Okay guys, it's your lucky day. I've collected so much stuff that it's time for me to start giving some of it away. Now, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I really like to build vintage kits. And today I've got a nice little vintage Heath kit to unbox for you. Uh, it's never been built. And I'll do my usual thing where I give you a little history about the kit. I explain how the circuits work. I build it. Uh, we fix any problems that come along the way. We test the old components and we replace what needs to be replaced with new ones. But this time when the kit is built, instead of it collecting dust on one of my shelves, I'm gonna give it away to one of you guys. And this will be a random contest. I'm going to pick one of your comments from any of my YouTube videos, provided that they've come after this video is made, and that also you're a subscriber to the channel. And really, it'll be as simple as that. Now, I only ask that your comments are civil and that they somehow contribute to the discussion at hand. Don't be that guy and leave a million comments and pull stuff out of your the winner really will be random, but I reserve the right to pull any comments that aren't in good faith. And again, I won't choose a winner until this Heath kit is built and I've released the final video in this series. But the more comments you make to my videos, the better the odds that you'll win. So you can start making comments at any time. Okay, so what are we building? Well, it's something I think a lot of you guys might like to have. It's an integrated amplifier made by Heathkit. Well, by me, I guess, too. And in this 1981 Heathkit catalog, we can see... Here it is. It's the Heathkit AA1219 Integrated Amplifier. Let me put my reading glasses on and we'll see what it says. Okay, it's a budget-pleasing stereo amplifier, uh, 15 watts minimum RMS per channel into eight ohms with less than a half percent total harmonic distortion from 20 to 20,000 hertz. It has a phono, tape, tuner and auxiliary inputs and a tape output and originally sold for $154.95. Now checking my notes, I see that I purchased this on eBay on July 25th of 2019 and I paid $386. And I originally bought this not only because I thought it would be a fun kit to build, but that it would also make for a nice little bench amp. And I still think that, and part of me really wants to hold on to this amp. But you know what? I've got a little bench amp already. Time to start giving some stuff away. I've just got too much. Let's open up the box now and see what we've got. Okay, here we go. What's this? Uh, looks like the previous owner was taking some kind of inventory. Uh, okay, well, hopefully we have all the parts. An envelope for ordering parts. Well, there we go. If I'm missing anything, I can just order it, right? One of those Heathkit builder's guides. Uh, lots of good soldering tips in here for beginners. Soldering tips, you get it? And the basic codes for resistor and capacitor markings. You know, I'm actually ashamed to say that I still haven't memorized my resistor color codes. And I really should take the time to work on that. But my memory is just terrible. And in fact, I'm ashamed to say that I haven't memorized my resistor color codes. And that I really should take the time to work on that. Because, yeah, my memory is terrible. Some info here about the resistors. Yeah, see, this is the period when Heathkit was bought out by Zenith, the early 80s. Sort of the final days for Heathkit as they stopped offering audio kits by, I think it was 1986. And interestingly, they did come back briefly. I think it was the 88 catalog, but those were really Harman Kardon kits. I think by 1990, those disappeared also. And by 92, Heathkit stopped selling kits altogether. Sad, really. Here's an order form for parts, you know, in case you need a replacement electrolytic or something because you, I don't know, wired it backwards. Something I've never done. All right, here's our manual. Yeah, and here's what our amp, I mean your amp, will look like. Nice. All right, let's speed read this manual so we don't have to refer to it again. Okay, I got all that, did you? Ah, here's the front faceplate. Yeah, it's a simple low power amp, but the quality really is nice, and you can see it's got classic good looks. Let's take a look at the PC boards. Yeah, this looks good. Uh, as I said, the quality really is there. Here's the larger board, nicely labeled to help prevent component mix-ups. Not that I've ever had a mix-up. An envelope marked labels, and inside? Okay, yeah, the serial number sticker and some others. In this envelope, we have knobs? Nope, not in here. Uh-oh. 
Here's a wiring harness. Looks like Heath did all the hard work here for us. Yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about pre-assembled pieces and kits. Dynico sometimes does this as well. It's a time saver, but you miss out on an opportunity to build your skills. Oh, well. And what's this wad of paper all about? Oh, okay, here are the knobs. That's a relief. Yeah, and they look great too. Some screws, the power cord, a goodie bag with some solder, potentiometers, the ubiquitous Heathkit nut starter, AC accessory outlet. Here's another bag. And no, by the way, folks, Heathkit didn't supply their kits and Ziplocs. This kit was probably harvested for parts, and the person I bought this from did their best to restock it. Inside we have diodes and IC marked 44241. I believe this is the gain amp for the phono stage, and they've provided a socket for the chip, which will fit in something like this. Here's a trimmer. Whoops, there you are. Yeah, these are probably going to allow us to balance the phono levels. A mylar capacitor and diode, rubber grommet and zip tie, wire nut, ceramic cap, transistor, Okay, and the switches. Yeah, these are all pre-mounted in this assembly. And you can see that the four input switches are mechanically linked so that only one can be activated at a time. The RCA jacks, yeah, looking a bit tarnished, but no worries, I can polish that right up. The insulator for the jacks, they'll fit together something like this. Ah, uh, here's the power transformer. Looks like there's no rust, so that's good news. Just a bit of uh, stuck paper, and again, no problem, that should clean right up. And for today's healthy snack, we have a fuse holder, a bunch of bags with some lugs and nuts. Oh, and more knobs. Yeah, these are for the push buttons. Very nice. A choke, more hardware, another choke, 5-watt resistor, speaker connector strip, an orange drop style capacitor, headphone jack. This is the unswitched kind, so there's going to be a front panel control to turn the speakers off when listening to headphones. A rubber foot, a bulb and socket. A fuse, a large ceramic capacitor, probably used for noise filtering across the AC line. Yeah, this is a bit dangerous in that role, so uh, I won't use this, and instead we'll install a safety capacitor there. Another bulb and socket. Yeah, and you know with Heathkit, these bulbs may not be for display purposes, but instead actually for testing the amp once it's built. They work kind of like a poor man's multimeter, and I'll explain more about that when the time comes. Silicone grease, this will be to heat sink the output transistors. Okay, one more bag, and it appears to be all electrolytics. Two large 5,000 microfarad caps. This amp is direct coupled, so these are going to be for the power supply filtering. And note the 8013 date code, manufactured on the 13th week of 1980. And I'll test all the electrolytics, but most likely they're all going to be replaced with new caps. Here's a nice quality Nishikon electrolytic, and another. And here's one by TI, and no, that's not Texas Instruments. These are made by the Tekat Group or something like that, T-E-C-A-T-E, -E, I believe it is. Uh, yeah, also very good quality. And here we have some nice aluminum parts for the chassis. And yeah, side note, I did eventually see that diode in there. Did you? Some more aluminum parts. Again, this is a simple amp, but it really does have a solid build quality. Here's the front of the chassis uh, with holes for the controls, and you can see how everything will line up. The back panel, slots for two accessory outlets, the uh, fuse, inputs, etc. Yeah, looks good. Some wires, a uh, plastic piece, not sure what that's for yet. Oh, check it out. This has wood blocks for the side panels. Yeah, looks like solid wood too. No veneer. Nice touch. Yeah, these are really nice. What the heck is in here? Oh, I see. These are the transistor insulators. And looks like this will be our bottom panel. Beautiful. No corrosion. And the top panel also looks perfect. No corrosion. Okay, anything else in the box? No, that's it. And here are all the parts. Let's build this thing. Actually, we'll start to do that in the next episode. Stay tuned. And remember, you can win this amp once it's built. Just follow these rules.
Looking for a shiny new gadget for your bench? Some good books on electronics, vintage hi-fi or old radios? Indispensable tools, cleaners or other products? Check out my new Amazon shop and help the channel. Lots of great products I actually own, use and recommend. Plus my thoughts on each one. Link in the description. To stay updated, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell to receive notifications when I release new videos. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I'll see you soon.